Okay, great, friends. Welcome to week 23. We're continuing with analytical geometry, and today we're going to be looking at the gradient or the slope of a line. It means the same thing. So let's start by looking at how to calculate the slope. Find the slope of the line pictured on the graph. So the slope of a line is defined to be rise over run, or you could also view it as change in y, change in y over change in x, over change in x. And let me show you what that means, change in x. So let's start at some arbitrary point on this line. They kind of, they highlight some of these points. So let's start at one of these points right over here. So if we wanted to start at one of these points, and let's say we want to change our x in the positive direction. So we want to go to the right. So let's say we want to go from this point to this point over here. How much do we have to move in x? So if we want to move in x, we have to go from this point to this point. We're going from negative 3 to 0. So we're going from negative 3 to 0. So our change in x and this triangle, that's delta, that means change in. Our change in x is equal to 3. So our change in x over here is equal to 3. So what was our change in y when our change in x is equal to 3? Well, over that same, when we moved from this point to this point, our x value changed by 3. But what happened to our y value? Well, our y value went down. It went from positive 3 to positive 2. Our y value went down by 1. So our change in y is equal to negative 1. So we rose negative 1. We actually went down. So our rise is negative 1 when our run, when our change in x is 3. So change in y over change in x is negative 1 over 3. Or we could say that our slope, we could say that our slope is negative 1 third. Let me scroll over a little bit. It is negative one third. And I want to show you that we can do this but any two points on the line. We could even go further than three in the x direction. So let's let's go the other way. Let's start at this point right over here and then move backwards to this point over here just to say that we'll still get the same result. So to go from this point to that point, what is our change in x? So our change in x is this right over here. Our change in x is that distance right over there. We started at 3, and we went to negative 3. We went back 6. Over here, our change in x is equal to negative 6. We're starting at this point now. So over here, our change in x is negative 6. And then when our change in x is negative 6, when we start at this point and we move 6 back, what is our change of y to get to that point? Well, our y value went from 1. That was our y value at this point. And then when we go back to this point, our y value is 3. So now our y value is 3. So what did we do? We moved up by 2. Our change in y is equal to 2. So over here, our change in y is equal to 2. Slope is change in y over change in x, or rise over run. Change in y is just rise. Change in x is just run, how much you're moving in the horizontal direction. So change in, so rise over run in this example right over here is going to be, is going to be 2 over negative 6, which is the same thing as negative one-third. And you could verify it for yourself. Take any of these two points, start at one of these two points, and figure out what is, what is the run to get to the next point, and then what is the rise to get to the next point. And for any line, the slope won't change. Let me do it again. Over here, we had to move in the positive three direction, so that is our run. So this right here is positive three. That's our run. But what's our rise? Well, we actually went down, so we have a negative rise. Our rise is negative 1. So we have negative 1 as our rise. We went down, and our run was positive 3. So our slope here is negative 1 third. Find the slope of the line that goes through the ordered pairs 4, 2, and negative 3, 16. So just as a reminder, slope, slope is defined as rise over run. Or you could view that rise is just change in y, and run is just change in x. The triangles here, that's the delta symbol. It literally means change in. Or another way, and you might see this formula, and it tends to be really complicated, but just remember, it's just these two things over here. Sometimes slope will be specified with the variable m, and they'll say that m is the same thing, and this is really the same thing as change in y. They'll write y2 minus y1 over 
x2 minus x1. And this notation tends to be kind of complicated. But all this means is, is you take the y value of your end point and subtract from it the y value of your starting point. That'll essentially give you your change in y. And it says start, take your, the x value of your end point and subtract from that the x value of your starting point. And that'll give you change in x. So whatever of, which, whatever of these work for you, let's actually figure out the slope of the line that goes through these two points. So let, we're starting at, and actually we could do it both ways. We could start at this point and go to that point and calculate the slope. Or we could start at this point and go to that point and calculate the slope. So let's do it both ways. So let's say that this, our starting point, our starting point is the point 4, comma 2. And let's say that our end point, our end point is negative 3, comma 16. So what is the change in x over here? What is the change in x in this scenario? So we're going from 4 to negative 3. If something goes from 4 to negative 3, what was its change? Well, it takes, you have to go negative, you have to go down 4 to get to 0, and then you have to go down another 3 to get to negative 3. So our change in x here, our change in x here is negative 7. Actually, let me write it even, let me write it this way. Let me write it this way. Our change in x is equal to negative 3 minus 4, which is equal to negative 7. If I'm going from 4 to negative 3, I went down by 7. Our change in x is negative 7. Let's do the same thing for the change in y. And notice, I implicitly use this formula over here. Our change in x, our change in x was this value, our end point, our end of x value, minus our starting x value. Let's do the same thing for our change in y. Our change in y, if we're starting at 2 and we go to 16, that, we, that means we moved up 14. Or another way you could say it, you could take your ending y value and subtract from that your starting y value, and you get 14. So what is the slope over here? Well, the slope is just change in y over change in x. So the slope over here is change in y over change in x, which is our change in y is 14. And our change in x is negative 7. And then if we want to simplify this, 14 divided by negative 7 is negative, is negative 2. Now what I want to show you is, is that we could have done it the other way around. We could have made this the starting point and this the end point. And what we would have gotten is the negative values of each of these, but then they would have canceled out, and we would still get negative 2. Let's try it out. So let's say that our start point was negative 3, comma, 16. And let's say that our end point is the 4, comma, 2. 4, comma, 2. So in this situation, what is our change in x? our change in x. If I start at negative 3 and I go to 4, that means I went up 7. Or if you want to just calculate that, you would do 4 minus negative 3. 4 minus negative 3. But the, needless to say, we just went up 7. And what is our change in y? Our change in y over here, or I, we could say our rise. If we start at 16 and we end at 2, that means we went down 14. Or you could just say 2 minus 16 is negative 14. We went down by 14. This was our run. So if you say rise over run, which is the same thing as change in y over change in x, our rise is negative 14. And our run here is 7. So notice, these are just the negatives of these values from when we swap them. So once again, this is equal to negative 2. And let's just visualize this. Let me, do a quick and, let me just do a quick graph here just to show you what a downward slope would look like. So let me draw our two points. So this is my x-axis. That is my y-axis. So this point over here, 4, comma 2. So let me graph it. So we're going to go all the way up to 16. So let me save some space here. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4. It's 4, comma, 1, 2. So 4, comma, 2 is right over here. 4, comma, 2. Then we have the point negative 3, comma, 16. So let me draw that over here. So we have negative 1, 2, 3, and we have to go up 16. So this is 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it goes right over here. So this is negative 3, comma, 16 negative 3 comma 16. So the line that goes between them is going to look something like this. Try my best my best to draw 
a relatively straight line. That line will keep going. So the line will keep going. So that's my best attempt. And now notice, it's downward sloping. As you increase in x value, the line goes down. It's, it's going from the top left to the bottom right. As x gets bigger, y gets smaller. That's what a downward sloping line looks like. And just to visualize our change in x's and our change in y's that we dealt with here, when we started at 4, and we ended at, or when we started at 4, 2 and ended at negative 3, 16, that was analogous to starting here and ending over there. And we said our change in x, our change in x was negative 7. We had to move back. Our run, we had to move in the left direction by 7. That's why it was negative 7. And then we had to move in the y direction. We had to move in the y direction positive 14. So that's why our rise was positive. So it was 14 over negative 7 or negative 2. When we did the other way, we started at this point. We started at this point and then ended at this point. Started at negative 3, 16, and ended at that point. So in that situation, our run, our run was positive 7. And now we have to go down in the y direction, since we switched the starting and the end point. And now we have to go down negative 14. Our run is now positive 7, and our rise is now negative 14. Either way, we got the same slope. Great, two. That was very instructive. Let's look at one final example. Find the slope of the line that goes through the ordered pairs 7, comma, negative 1, and negative 3, comma, negative 1. Let me just do a quick graph of these just so we can visualize what they look like. So let me, let me draw a quick graph over here. So our first point is 7, comma, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. This is the x-axis. 7, comma, negative 1. So 7, comma, negative 1 is right over there. 7, negative 1. This, of course, is the y-axis. And then the next point is negative 3, comma, negative 1. So we go back 3 in the horizontal direction, negative 3. But the y-coordinate is still negative 1. It's still negative 1. So the line that connects these two points will look like this. It will look like that. Now, they're asking us to find the slope of the line that goes through the ordered pairs. Find the slope of this line. And just to give a little bit of intuition here, slope is a measure of a line's inclination. And the way that it's defined, slope is defined as rise over run or change in y over change in x, or sometimes you'll see it defined as, as the variable m, and then they'll define change in y as just being the second y-coordinate minus the first y-coordinate, and then the change in x as the second x-coordinate minus the first x-coordinate. These are all different variations in slope, but hopefully you appreciate that these are measuring inclination. If I rise a ton when I run a little bit, if I move a little bit in the x-direction and I rise a bunch, then I have a very steep line. I have a, a very steep upward sloping line. If I don't change at all in the, when, I, when I run a bit, then I have a very low slope, and that's actually what's happening here. I'm going from, you can either you view this as a starting point or view this as a starting point, but let's do, view this as a starting point. So this negative 3 comma 1. If I go from negative 3, if I go from negative 3 comma negative 1 to 7 comma negative 1, I'm running a good bit. I'm going from negative 3, my x value is negative 3 here, and it goes all the way to 7. So my change in x here, my change in x here is 10. To go from negative 3 to 7, I change my x value by 10. But what's my change in y? Well, my y value here is negative 1, and my y value over here is still negative 1. So my change in y is 0. My change in y is going to be 0. I, my y value does not change no matter how much I change my x value. So the slope here, the slope here is going to be what's, when we run 10, when we run 10, what was our rise? How much did we change in y? Well, we didn't rise at all. We didn't go up or down. So the slope here is 0. Or another way to think about it is this line has no inclination. It's a completely flat. It's a completely horizontal line. So this should make sense. This is a 0, 
the slope here is 0. And just to make sure that this gels with all of these other formulas that you might know, but I want to make it very clear, these are all just telling you rise over run, or change in y over change in x, a way to measure inclination. But let's just apply them, just so hopefully it, it all makes sense to you. So we could also say slope is change in y over change in x. If we take this, if we take this to be our start, and if we take this to be our end point, then we would call this over here x1, and then this is over here, this is y1, and then we would call this x2, and we would call this y2, if this is our start point and that is our end point. And so the slope here, the change in y, y2 minus y1, so it's negative 1 minus negative 1, minus negative 1, all of that over x2, negative 3, minus x1, minus 7. So the numerator, negative 1 minus negative 1, that's the same thing as negative 1 plus 1. And our denominator is negative 3 minus 7, which is negative 10. So once again, negative 1 plus 1 is 0 over negative 10. And this is still going to be 0. And the only reason why we got a negative 10 here and a positive 10 there is because we swapped the starting and the ending points. In this example right over here, we took this as the start point and made this this coordinate over here is the end point. Over here, we swap them around. 7, negative 1 was our start point, and negative 3, negative 1 is our end point. So if we start over here, if we start over here, our change in x is going to be negative 10, but our change in y is still going to be 0. So regardless of how you do it, the slope of this line is 0. It's a horizontal line. Great, Ted. So now you know what happens when you have a horizontal line. Please make sure you know how to work out the gradient or the slope of a straight line. It's actually really easy. And then go practice and then do the examples at the end of the section. Thanks, Ted. Have an awesome day.